In a recent video, I was showing how you can convert these little aluminium USB power bank LED lights by putting in a new LED chip. And some of you mentioned about this. It's a, it plugs into a USB power bank or into this. And it basically gives you zoom ability. So you've got the uh, zoom ring on it so you can actually change the diameter of the beam that focus it up. It's got the higher mode, low mode, which has pulsed modulation, as you can see. And then it's got the annoying strobe mode. And if you hold it in, it does the full on SOS. Everybody's doing it. Let's ignore it and not actually even bother responding to that type mode. So the interesting thing about this particular one is that it comes as part of a head torch. And at this point in time, just to make space on the bench, I want to mention this is uh, tonight's candy, which is uh, Old Timer's Van Autodrop. Sweets sent from Holland by Remco, R-E-M-K-O. Someone recently mentioned uh, that Remco was also named for British Fairground Lighting Company. It was. R-E-M-C-O for the British one. Sadly, no longer about. I don't think they're about anymore. But uh, they were like a classic of the British Fairground industry. So these things are like our, almost like our Pontefract cakes, except oval, and they're very hard, which means they're completely unlike Pontefract cakes, but not too worry. Uh, they're sweet, they're not salty, which is quite nice, and they're very sort of deep, treacly licorice flavour, so thanks Remco for those. It's taken me a while to get round to looking at Remco's stuff because it got buried in the Gadget Mountain, unfortunately. These things happen. But back to the thing in hand. What we have here is a head torch with an angleable um, head bit, and you can plug this USB light in. Do you think, oh, that's quite interesting. Wouldn't it be good if you could plug other things in, like, say, for instance, th this and... No. Unfortunately, the only things that are going to plug into it, and that includes these here, will not plug in. Uh, the only things that are going to plug in are USB lights with the uh, USB plug dead center, as it is in these. So you plug this in, and it's not that bad at all. The unit here takes a couple of 18650 lithium cells. It's worth mentioning that there's two things worth mentioning here. This is a protected lithium cell. It's an ultra fire. It's, it's one of those batteries where they thought it was a really good idea to include the word fire in a lithium cell brand. That's not a good idea. Two things. This is a protected one, and it does accept it, but it will also need the pip on the end. If you get a cell which has the flat end without the pip, then it won't make connection in here. You can put it in, nothing will happen. You can even feel when you put it in that it's not making connection. It's not doing that thing when you slide it in that you feel the battery kick back a little bit, like with this one. So this thing does take protected cells. This is quite useful, but it should theoretically contain protection itself anyway. I'll just put in one at the moment because it has a built-in USB charger, as is so common in these things. You've got a little tab pulls back here and then you can plug a lead in and when you plug the lead in to charge, it charges at about 500 milliamps. Quite useful. Quite useful, even more useful, when you realise that when you're not using this as a head torch, you can actually theoretically charge your phone from this because this does actually put out 5 volts, so it's got a boost circuit in it. Other things worth noting there. Um, the back of it has a charge LED, which shows the different levels of the charge, but in reality it's just a very simple... Um, power bank circuit. It's just red for charging, green for charged. It's got a signal light with a separate button. I was actually, I only discovered this. I thought that was just maybe, although I could see an LED below it, I thought it was just a fake thing uh, just to make it look like it had more function. But it turns out when I was groping around looking for any screws that might get this, hold this together, if you click this bit here, it lights in two modes. And the main headlight bit doesn't need to be on when you're doing that. You can just operate this purely as a sort of little signal light on its own. Uh, what happens if you hold the button in continuously? No, nothing. This is just a, a very simple little extra feature. I don't know if there's screws still under there. I don't know what holds this together. Anything else worth saying? Yeah, charges at 500 milliamps, has these cells. I think we should just get straight into it, shouldn't we? I don't know where the circuitry is for the boost. I'm guessing it might be tucked under here. The only way we're going to find that out is to take that out. Now, 
I don't see any screws holding this together. I'm guessing... Oh, that's promising. There is a little cover here that almost popped out, but then popped right, right back in again. It does have a circuit board under it. Oh, and that was kind of glued onto the back, but isn't anymore. There's the circuit board that has the indicators. I only see a couple of wires going out to that. Oh, tell you what, tell you what, the little circuit board is only under the signal light and the button. Uh, the charging indicator is on this circuit board here. Let's uh, see if we can hike that out. Where's my long nose pliers? Or I'll just use my snips in a sort of reckless manner. Oh, that little circuit board there is going to... It's kind of trapped in, it's kind of glued in. Where they've stuck that in with glue, which is quite an odd construction technique, it's kind of glued the circuit board in as well. That's a bit disappointing, not to worry. This is going to be destructive, is it not? I'm going to have to push this cable in. Uh, for waterproofing perspective, it's got that little rubber cover that kind of keeps popping open. It's got this gland here, this cable gland that you get the feeling they're never ever really going to be 100% perfect in keeping the water out. But it's at least an effort. This little circuit board here is going to break at some point. Not that I particularly need that circuit board. Let's whip that out. Oh, and it's got the connection going up to the other end. of. So it's actually not just the uh, flashing indicator there, but it's actually the connection up to the positive of the batteries. That's interesting. What we've got on here is... I don't see the power bank chip. I don't see the booster chip. I wonder if that's in the head, then. So what have we got here? TP4056, it does have a number on it. The number on it is 4057AH. 4057AH, I would bring out my other magnifier and show you that closer, but uh, I've not got it here. It's over next to the computer. Right, so what we have here, then, I think this is just the battery supply going out to the other side, so the boost circuitry must be in there. I'm just being careful about these wires that are so breathtakingly close together. Uh, B plus and B minus, it is literally, it is just putting the battery voltage out, so that is purely a charge control chip. And where are the LEDs? Ah, uh, the LEDs, the two LEDs are under here. Uh, I should zoom down in this, shouldn't I, really? So, we've got the Battery negative connections coming to a common plane. We've got the two LEDs just tucked under here. They're the ones that shine through the back of the panel in this uh, battery symbol. We've got the positive connection and negative connections. We've got the positive coming through the circuit board here, which has a little generic six pin chip in it. And the LED there, that's all. It's, it's a button. A few components, timing components maybe, and uh, a resistor for the LED. Not a lot. No, that might just be a little uh, pull-up resistor for the button. Um, and then the power. This is just a charge control chip, and then the power is going out straight to the head here. The head does have screws in the back. Let's pop the head off it. I'm hoping I was in shot there, because I've done that thing again, and I know some of you said it would be really handy having a mark in the middle of the uh, bench, and that's what that little dot's there for. But when I'm engrossed, the excitement is too much. Sometimes I just don't... Uh, I don't remember to look at stuff like that. I get so engrossed that I just completely forget that I zoomed in, and uh, I'm just working within a sort of larger area here. And that's, uh, I think I'm in shot, but I'm not necessarily. Ooh, so what do we have here? This is going to let me test. It's a little, it's a very odd little thing. See that? We've got the little, um, more like a big transistor type package called B3P6C. B3P6C. Uh, we've got the a diode, a capacitor across, probably the capacitor is across the, the, I'm guessing the capacitor is actually across the um, output. Could be wrong. And we've got a diode, which is probably part of the boost circuit here with a hundred 
uh, micro henry and doctor is that 100 micro henry it's one zero zero is that 100 or is that 10 micro henry i've not actually got anything to measure that with but this does give us a chance if i stick a battery in here if i put this back together in a haphazard manner a wire has come off is it important wire yes it is that's a bit of a party pooper ah uh, sugar that was a uh, that's not ideal uh, I'm definitely off shot there. Right, okay, I want to find out the current of this is. Um, give me a moment, I'm just going to solder that back on. The repair is done. I also uh, gave me an opportunity to check out these chips. And also, uh, while I'm at it, the model number of this, the actual, if you want to find one of these on uh, eBay, it's very easy. All you have to do is look for the name Probe Shiny or shiny probe indeed, and you'll find uh, it, the way I found this listing was, or we found it should I say, because I got this a while ago, was probe shiny headlamp is how I found this. And uh, this is the luxury version. This one comes with two, uh, inverted commas, 3,200 milliamp hour 18650s. So it comes with two one amp hour cells, and uh, it comes with a USB lead or for about three pounds less because you really for three pounds you do not get two actual 3200 milliamp hour cells but for three pound less like six or seven pounds you can get uh, the version without any cells you can put the cells of your choice in but you do get this sort of the LED bit that plugs into it which uh, it, it's reasonable enough it's quite good it's quite usable as a light Plus, it also doubles off as a power bank. The little chip on the back of the circuit board, I couldn't find any big images. I couldn't find any more information, just a couple of uh, images like this. It's the, a dedicated LED flasher called CX3804. It's got a button. It's got a sw switch for an option. Not sure what the option is. But the button is uh, switches through the modes. It probably adds other modes. And the LED pulls down to the negative rail, or it can be used to drive transistors. In this case, it had a 68 ohm resistor. Uh, in series with the red LED in the back of the flashlight. That's just purely the little flashing light on the back here. The boost circuitry. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit just to get this in. Again, no information for this component here. It's called a B3P6C. I did find very, very tiny images of, of it online, so I just redrew it out so we could get a higher resolution resolution image. VN uh, decoupling capacitor for stability, which is possibly missing on this one. Yeah, I think that's missing. Hold on, I'm just going to probe this. Let's uh, bring in a meter. So I'm looking to probe from about there. And there. Yeah. So the input capacitor is just completely missing in this, which is a bit naughty. It means it's not going to be as stable and limits its uh, function. So uh, this one is missing, unfortunately. We've got the little inductor. We've got the chip, which is just optimally designed for this task. We've got a Schottky diode uh, for the speed and uh, um, output capacitor, which is the one that's actually across the USB, USB out. Uh, I couldn't find any information about it online, but I saw a Chinese website where they'd been reverse engineering something, and in amongst all the Chinese text was one megahertz and one amp. So I'm guessing this is a one fixed frequency one megahertz uh, unit dry, uh, boost circuit, and it's rated for one amp. Let's put that to the test right now. Now that we've got this uh, out, and now we've ascertained it's called Shiny Probe, I can make a smutty joke by saying I'm about to slip one in. <laughs> right, so that's uh, that's got 5 volts up at the end there. Let's ascertain if that is 5 volts. So I'll plug in the Unity, and we'll zoom down in this. So, theoretically, 1 amp. But keep in mind, this is thin wire leading to it, so I'm not actually holding my breath here. Where is my load test? There it is. So let's get in my adjustable load tester. And we'll turn this up and wait in between turning up sections. So the voltage is already at 0.7. Uh, hold on, let's see at what point uh, the voltage drops significantly. 
So at 360 milliamps, it's 4.9 volts. 500 milliamps, 500, say 600 milliamps, it's 4.8 volts. That's not too bad. It's now displaying low voltage 4.7. And as I turn this up, 4.5. So really, and when it hits one amp, Let's see if I can uh, just ascertain when this kicks back in. Turn this down slowly. Well, let's say stable-ish up to about 800 milliamps, and then it takes a bit of a dive. Yeah. Where, at what point does it cut back down? Yeah, anything above about 800 milliamps, but I get the feeling that if this that little chip is rated for one amp, it's been compromised by the fact they didn't include that one little extra capacitor there for local decoupling for stability. And also uh, this lead coming out and the other circuits losses are going to severely impact its ability because it's quite thin cable, so impact its ability to supply that one amp. But, other than that, you know, it's not that bad. It's not perhaps the easiest thing to manufacture because this bit here was glued in there. They've put this in and then they've glued it down. And while I was uh, soldering the wire back and that into the circuit board, this end snapped off the positive contacts and it's a little brass or, well, brass, hold on, magnet. It's a little brass coloured steel. Uh, plate there and uh, it's the little tang snapped off so that's a weakness that if you you know perhaps it's going to be a fracture point if you ever have one of these that just goes completely dead that might be where it failed um, and that also because I soldered it directly on now that won't go down far enough for me to press the button and click it to actually turn the backlight on not that I need that but um, it's okay, you know, other than that, it's not perfect, but for what it is, and at the very least, you can always use this with uh, another power bank. Just plug it into absolutely anything to give you the power bank function, you know, the flashlight functionality. So it's not bad altogether for that. It's uh, certainly reasonable as a toy and quite interesting the way it's assembled. I see a surge of these, well, it's been going for a while, hasn't it? The, the ever-increasing sophistication, the higher output LED flashlights. When it comes to the crunch, if you're working, oh, tell you what, you know what I've not done? Most remiss of me. Let's take this to bits. Let's zoom down and take this. But the surge, so this end unscrews. There's a little sort of spacer there, or is it a little rotary bit? Oh, so there's a lens, and this outer ring has a coarse thread in it that winds that backwards and forwards. So if I wind that completely out, is it going to have enough room to then thread through? And find the little circuit board. The little circuit board, how is that actually clamped in there? Does it come out from that side? Hold on, I'm going to have to shine a light down here. Oh, it's clipped in. What's my chance of getting that out? Well, let's uh, try. Let's destroy the thing completely. It can be put back together. I think if I lever up in there while pressing down, the thing might come out the bottom. I can't actually see anything now. I'm probably breaking it. But I'm going to have to grip this flashlight in my teeth as one does and try and co coax this out. Oh, I think that's clipped in. I just snapped that tag off. I think it's clipped in with one more than one clip. I think it really is quite seriously clipped in. So I don't know if I'm going to look that out. But I think we can safely say that it almost certainly contains the little six pin chip, this is probably the same one that was actually in that, but with other options enabled. And the button is just a little tactile button that's uh, going onto that circuit board. And then it's soldered onto the lead, but that thing should pop out, but it is clipped in quite forcibly. So it's not coming out. Oh well, 
it was worth a go. Any further investigation would result in it breaking completely, but I don't think it's going to reveal an awful lot more other than just the usual little uh, driver chip, maybe a transistor at best, to beef the current up for this and then the wires coming straight up to the LED. But that's it. It's uh, very simple and it's quite interesting the way it all goes together and each component can be used separately as a power bank for charging stuff or this with a separate power bank. So actually quite neat.